Hey there guys, Connor here with Chrome Designs and thank you for watching this video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to render in Cinema 4D. I've been receiving a few questions um, along the lines of, well, how do I actually render and how would you render as a picture? I'm just going to be running you through these things today. So first of all, I'm just going to set up a basic scene with a um, with a plane as a floor. I'm going to make the plane really big. Spam a few numbers in. There we go. Uh, just say, for example, I'll add in a cube, drag it up to 100 so it sits on top of the plane, and I'll add a sphere. And now, when I add a sphere, I'll add in a, some just some text, text object. Now, I'm just going to leave the text at this because I'm just going to be showing you how to render. But what we're going to be doing, I'm going to make a quick animation. Now, I'll tell you why I'll change my mind. I'll show you how to. But render as a picture first so if you just make a few materials I'm just gonna make some materials if you haven't got them added some reflection color um, green with maybe and I'll copy that channel uh, in fact how do you copy that channel uh, pasted the ch 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 I'll just leave it green and then I'll, in fact, I'll just go to luminance and make that green like so and so I'm just gonna add this onto the text and I'm just gonna control click just to make a new one but I'm just gonna change the second one to to blue and then the luminance also to blue this just makes it give it a bit more reflection sort of like there's a light within in a mild sense but as you see that's got some colors to it so if you just render it out by clicking on that icon just there you'll see well it's just really bland it's like grey bog flooring and just some luminance text with no actual depth or reflection or anything but I'm, on the text I'm just going to make it bigger so I'm going to make it 100 and I'll probably change the font as well to Neo Sans bold italic there we go just so it maybe looks a bit better when I come to show you and now to render as a picture you want to go to render and render settings and generally you want full render output if you save it as a desktop you want it as whatever your desktop settings are uh, 1280 by 720 usually does the job alright uh, frame range current range uh, these don't really matter because it's a picture uh, save now save is this is how you save it so you just click on them little dots uh, go to desktop say you want to save it to the desktop uh, you type it in picture and format you say whatever format you like I already use JPEG uh, set up to a hundred quality and under multipass you just leave that as it is and under this setting here you want to go to best and filter and it's going to be a still image now you can crank these um, these settings up uh, the higher you crank them uh, the better quality will be and the more sharper the more crisper the edges but it will take a long time to render so I'm, I'm gonna have it two no, I'm gonna have it one by one by I believe it's four by four and leave the rest as it is and leave options as it is but if you go to effect and ambient occlusion maximum ray length crank that up to 160 and create a bit of contrast 40 now this will base this will create a light in your scene. If we just render it out here, you it will, it will kind of detect where the shadows would be and everywhere. So it's like a like a 360 sort of light. So as you can see there, it's actually creating shadows on the inside without getting in the mixture of having loads of different area lights and etc. But no, this is how you start it off. As you can see, it's taking quite a long time to render on the lower settings. It really just depends on your system. My computer not the best, but it's okay. But that's just creating some shadows, and that looks a lot better. As a, and it's even got the shadows on the floor. It looks a lot better than just adding a typical light where the shadow's like ugh, in your face and doesn't look that good. But that's what I recommend. That's why often use on pretty much everything I do that's why everything takes a long time to render because as you see it just took a minute or so there just to render one frame 
So just say you're doing that for 150, it will take a long time. But now, we're going to render as a picture. So once you've changed your render setting, which I just went through, and making sure that your save is on JPEG, etc. Just go to the, under dynamics, there's a little cut bar. Go to render to picture viewer. Um, no. In fact, I can't actually do it at the moment because I'm rendering something else. But you just go to render picture viewer. You say, do you want to stop it? No, because it's been going for about an hour now. But, and I don't want to have to do it again. I just click no and then go to save and save as and it will it will save and where you saved it. Any problems, I'll just let me know and I'll sort it out for you. No, my computer seems to have frozen. There we go. Now just say you want to render as an animation. Just say I've got some animation on the text here. Let's go to the text object. Move along, just say 15 frames and the text moves along this way. Just showing you so if you click play it will slide along. If you want to render that animation, you just change the keyframes to how long. You can click the play button so you know how like long the actual how long it will be moving for. If you're doing quite a long animation and the 90 frames aren't enough, you can just type in your amount down here. 180. Just drag this bar out so it stretches out into a lower lower sensitivity. And I'm gonna change it back to 90 here for you guys. And just say you want, just say you have an animation, but it only goes up to 30 frames. There's not much need changing it down to 30. You could just go to render, render settings, and under save, you want to change it to I recommend QuickTime Movie. Options, I recommend 60, well 59.94 frames per second. Depth, millions of colors, best. And click OK. They are the best settings. Uh, under that under that section, if you if it takes too long to render and it's not that important, you can always just lower them down to like loads of colors, well millions of color instead of millions of color plus, and not the best. And what was I saying? Rendering as that. Yeah, go to output, and it will say frame range. So under you go to manual and zero, and it was up to thirty, I believe. It was up to 30, it was up to 30, so then it will only render up to 30 as opposed to rendering the whole the whole, th the, um, whole sequence. But no, that's running through the rendering tips in Cinema 4D. Uh, thanks for watching this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed, hope you maybe learned something. That ambient occlusion is a good effect, I recommend using it. Especially if, you got, if you're going to have a picture, I'd re you'd probably just go to... Um, Ambient occlusion, not ambient occlusion, my bad. Where is it? Uh, that this one, and just change it up to 4x4 by 8x8, something like that, just so it's maybe a bit better quality. But anyway, thanks for watching this video, as I just said. And I'll please remember to click like on the video, double click, as I believe it sometimes may not work. That is, if it, you liked it, that is. And just to show me your love. That's about it for me, guys. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you guys soon. Goodbye now.